Hi, boys and girls. Welcome. It's Wednesday night and time for Explorers at Glant Ken. We're glad that you joined us and hope you are ready to learn. Let's pray and ask Jesus to talk to us tonight. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all of these explorers who are joining us tonight to learn from your word and learn more about you. I pray that you bless them wherever they are and whatever needs they have or they're facing, just be close to them. Help us all to learn together tonight. Amen. Are you ready? We've got some songs and a wonderful lesson and story coming up. Here we go. Have you ever been excited to see a famous or important person? Huge crowds were gathered in Jerusalem because of a special celebration called Passover. Many people wanted to see this man who they had heard could do miracles, something only God could do. Who do you think it was? You're right. It was Jesus. Jesus was so amazing that many people wanted to see him. But Jesus and his disciples had been very busy and they were tired. Can you pretend to be tired? Give a big yawn. Oh. They needed to rest. But so many people were coming and going, couldn't rest or even eat. Jesus knew his disciples needed some rest. So he told them to come with him. They crossed the Sea of Galilee and went up the mountain to find a quiet place far from the city. Do you think they were alone? No, thousands of people followed them. They were still not able to rest. How would it make you feel if you were very tired? Instead of being angry or annoyed because the people couldn't let him rest, Jesus cared for the people. The people had come to listen that day for many reasons. Some even wanted to see miracles. The Bible said Jesus had compassion on the people. He saw the people as lost sheep without a shepherd. Without a shepherd, sheep wander and don't go the best way. The people were like that, wandering from God, who loved them. God loves you too, each and every one of you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He loves all the people in the world and he loves you. God made you and me. Can you name something else that God made? 
He also made the oceans, the sky, the trees, the whole beautiful world for us to enjoy. He even made the stars and the galaxies and outer space. He could do this because he is so powerful. God is also holy, which means he is perfect and always does the right thing. How amazing that this powerful, holy creator loves you. God also loved the people who came to listen to Jesus. Even if they didn't realize it, Jesus had come to meet their deepest need, to be forgiven of their sins, and to have their life with him forever. Jesus knew the people needed a relationship with him, so he began to teach them. Finally, the disciples came to Jesus and told him it was late and the people were hungry. Jesus told the disciples, you give the people something to eat. The disciples looked at the evidence. Here's the evidence that they found. There were 5,000 hungry people and there was nowhere to buy that much food. The disciples looked at the evidence and told Jesus, we need to send the people away to their homes so that they can get food for themselves. They knew it was impossible to feed all the hungry people. Can you act like you are really hungry? Oh, hold on to your belly and say, I am so hungry. Thousands of hungry people with no food. Most of them didn't know it, but they were had a more serious type of hunger than their empty stomachs. The sin in their hearts left their lives empty and longing for something more. You have sin in your heart too. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's law and makes him sad. The sin that you were born with makes you want to go against what God wants you to do. Your heart is wicked and goes against God. God did not create you to go against him, but to live with him. Sin separates us from God, the God who loves us. Sin was not part of God's plan, but because of sin, you and I will live our lives with things that are not like God. This is spiritual hunger. You may not realize that's what it is. You may try to fill your life with other things, cool friends, the latest gadgets, or uh, any, other of, any number of other things, but hunger is there. Because you were made to have a relationship with God. Sin keeps you from having that relationship with God. The result of sin is being separated from God now and for forever. You have a spiritual hunger because of the sin in your heart. The people in the crowd had sinful hearts too. They had a spiritual hunger that needed to be filled. Right now they were hungry for food as well. Jesus turned to Philip, one of his disciples, and said, Where can we buy food for these people? Looking at the thousands of people, Philip must have thought, it's hopeless. We can't buy enough food for this group. He examined the evidence and answered Jesus, eight months wages wouldn't buy enough bread even for everyone if they just took a tiny piece. Jesus was asking the impossible. Jesus already knew it was impossible for the disciples to provide food for all of those people. He already had a plan to provide for the people. He asked the disciples to do something impossible because he wanted them to learn to trust him as Lord and Savior. Andrew, another disciple, spoke up. There's a boy here with five loaves and two small fish, but that would not feed this crowd. What was Jesus going to do? Jesus spoke again. Have the people sit down in groups, he told the disciples. There were 5,000 men plus women and children. Soon the thousands of people were seated in groups of 50 to 100 on the grassy hillside. The crowd became quiet as Jesus stood before them. Why does Jesus want us to sit down? They must have wondered. What is he going to do? Holding the five loaves and the two fish in his hands, Jesus looked up to heaven and thanked God for the food. After he had given thanks, he broke the bread and the fish into pieces and gave them to each of his disciples. The 12 disciples then gave the bread and the fish to the people seated on the hillside. Let's pretend I'm one of the disciples and I'm giving you a basket of food. Each of you pretend to take some bread and fish and pass the rest to the next person beside you. But wait, what was happening? There was as much food as when the disciples first took it from Jesus' hands. No matter how much food people took, there was still more food. 
This was a miracle, something only Jesus could do. The people had never seen anything like this. They ate until they could not eat another mouthful and they ate until they could not eat another mouthful and were completely full. Gather up all the broken pieces of bread and fish that are left over so that nothing will be wasted, Jesus said. The disciples gathered 12 baskets full. The, be be the people began to talk excitedly among themselves. Some believed that Jesus was a prophet from God, that he had promised to send to the world. They wanted to make him king. It would be wonderful to have a king who could feed them by working miracles. But Jesus had come to earth for a far greater purpose. He came to satisfy their spiritual hunger. He came to satisfy their spiritual hunger, to know God and to have their sins forgiven. Only Jesus can satisfy the hunger everyone has to know God. Say with me, only Jesus satisfies. Only Jesus satisfies. Not everyone knows they are hungry for a relationship with God, but that's why Jesus came to earth, to satisfy people's deep hunger to know God. After About a year after this story took place, Jesus, God's perfect son, died on the cross. No one made him do it. Jesus wants you to have a relationship with God so much that he was willing to die. He was nailed to a wooden cross and the blood flowed from his body. He took the punishment for your sin so that you could be forgiven. In the Old Testament, God required that a perfect animal needed to die so people could be forgiven and could come close to God. This was called a sacrifice. When Jesus died, he was greater than any animal sacrifice. His perfect life and death on the cross made the way for you to be forgiven and brought you close to God. Jesus died, was buried, and came alive again. Today he is alive in heaven with God the Father, ruling as king over all. Because of what Jesus did, you can have a relationship with God and satisfy the spiritual hunger in your heart. The people didn't realize that Jesus had come to earth to satisfy their spiritual hunger. The people wanted to make Jesus king so that he could give them food by working miracles. Jesus knew the people wanted to make him king of their country. But before they could try to force him to become king, Jesus left and walked up the hillside alone. Would anyone believe that he was the son of God? Would anyone believe he had come to satisfy their spiritual hunger? Some of the crowd went back to their homes. Early the next morning, the crowd that was left waited for him. Others arrived by boat from the city of Tiberias. Many people were looking for Jesus, but he was nowhere to be found. But he was nowhere to be found. Maybe he went to Capernaum, they thought. They got in their boats and sailed across the lake toward the city. They found Jesus in Capernaum. Rushing up to him, they said, Rabbi or teacher, when did you come here? Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew they were looking for them. He knew they were looking for him. He said to them, You have not been looking for me because you saw the miracles, but because you were fed with the loaves and the, of bread and were filled. Today you are hungry again and you want more bread. You try so hard to get bread. That will last only for a little while. The true bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus was talking about himself. He was using bread as a picture uh, for what they really needed. They needed him. They needed to trust him for eternal life and then to trust in him for all of their other needs. If you have believed in the Lord Jesus as your savior, trust him to satisfy the needs of your heart. Spend time with him. There are needs in your heart that only Jesus can meet. It is tempting to try to meet those needs yourself or to fill your life with other things, but Jesus wants your life to be filled with him. When you need someone to talk to, he wants you to pray and talk to him. When you are sad and need someone to comfort you, he wants you to depend on him for that comfort. He wants you to spend time with him by reading the Bible and praying. It's not wrong to spend time doing other things, like hanging out with your friends, but the most important thing is spending time with God.
Jesus can satisfy the needs of your heart every day. Whether you're happy or sad or lonely or angry, this is called having fellowship with God. Just as you need bread or food every day for your body, you need to develop your relationship with God by spending time with Him. Spending time with God every day helps to satisfy your need for Him. Say with me, only Jesus satisfies. Jesus can satisfy the needs of your heart. Jesus was using bread to show the people that they needed to trust him for eternal life and then to trust in him for all of their other needs. But the crowd didn't understand. They must have thought, oh, how wonderful. If we had this bread, we would never be hungry again. We wouldn't need to earn money to buy bread. They were all excited. Lord, they exclaimed, give us this bread all the time. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He was saying, I am the only one you need for life with God. Do you think the people believed Jesus that day? Sadly, many did not believe in Jesus as the one who could save them from their sin and satisfy the hunger of their hearts to know God. They decided not to follow Jesus anymore. They didn't understand why Jesus had come to earth. Will you also go away and leave me? Jesus asked his disciples. Simon Peter spoke up, Lord, he said, we believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He was saying, no, we will not leave you. We believe you are the son of God sent from heaven. What about you? Do you believe Jesus is God's son who came from heaven to satisfy your spiritual hunger and save you from sin? Jesus died on the cross and came alive again so that you can have eternal life. The Bible, God's true word, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, in John 3.16. You must believe with all of your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and that he came alive again. To believe means you trust God as the only one who could take the punishment for your sin. When you do this, God says you are no longer separated from him. You have everlasting life and you have a relationship with God that he created you to have. Jesus, the bread of life, came to satisfy your need to be forgiven. Will you believe in him today? Please bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. If you already believe in the Lord Jesus as your Savior from sin, or if you have questions about what that means, you can go ahead and talk to God right now. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I know your mommies and daddies would be happy to answer too. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for being the bread of life. If there's a boy or a girl who's listening today, would you help them pray with Miss Joanna? Jesus, please forgive me for the things that I've done wrong. Will you come and live in my heart today? Will you help me to continue to grow with you each day as I read my Bible and pray? Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen.
How many of you like to go on really long trips? What was the longest trip you've been on? Mary Slessor took lots of long, scary trips in the jungles of Calabar. God had done amazing things through Mary Slessor. When she worked in Duke Town and Old Town, many twin babies were rescued. A whole village was changed because of God and His Word. Mary knew it was time for her to move on to a different place in Calabar. She wanted to tell the Okoyang people about Jesus. Everyone knew that the Okoyang people were wicked. But Mary knew this was where she was supposed to go. These people needed to know about God's love for them. When Mary decided to move to Okoyang, a chief who had become a good friend of Mary's loaned her his nicest canoe and 30 men to paddle it down the river. It was a wet, rainy morning when Mary climbed into the canoe with five of her children and Mr. Bishop, another missionary, who volunteered to help her move. The 30 men paddled the canoe all day long and all day it rained. Let's pretend that we can paddle a canoe. Finally, as night was falling, the men steered the canoe toward the shore. The long trip down the river was finally over, but Mary and her children still had to walk another three miles through the jungle to get to the village that she was going to, and she was determined to get there that night. Why don't we wait until morning, Ma, said one of the rowers. We're all tired and it's dark and wet and we don't want to go into the jungle at night. There are all kinds of wild animals. But the next day was Sunday, and Mary did not want anyone to work or travel then. So Mary told her oldest boy, who was 11 years old, to lead the way into the dark, thick jungle. Behind him walked the rest of her children, then Mary, who was carrying a baby on her back and lugging a large package of supplies. Mr. Bishop and the paddlers carrying the rest of the supplies would come a little later. Everyone, let's stand up together and see if we can pretend to walk with them. Imagine that you've been wet all day long. You're soaking, you're exhausted from a day's travel, but you have to keep walking. You hear a sound of wild animals all around you. You can see their eyes shining in the darkness. The trail walk you're walking on is rough, full of ruts and big rocks. You may open your eyes now and sit down. That's what it was like for Mary and her family walking through the jungles at night. Mary's children cried because they were hungry, wet, and tired, but Mary sang silly songs to cheer them up, and finally they made it. The other times Mary had visited the village, the people had come out to greet her with a lot of noise and excitement, but this night, everything was strangely quiet. There were just a few slaves in the huts. One of them helped Mary to find a hut to stay in. Another one ran to tell the chief that Mary had arrived. She found out the entire village was away at a funeral and no one knew when they would get back. Mary and her children settled into the hut, but the clean clothes were with the paddlers coming later. Mary sang to the children and put them to bed. She wondered where Mr. Bishop and the paddlers were. She didn't have to wait long. Mr. Bishop arrived and told her the paddlers had refused to walk through the jungle at night because they were scared. Mr. Bishop had brought as many supplies as he could carry with him, including dry clothes for the children. Mary was angry that the paddlers had refused to come. Even though she was wet and tired and couldn't fit her feet into boots, she trudged barefoot all the way back to the canoe. Sure enough, there were the men, sound asleep. Mary woke them up. Let's all shout, wake up. Can you try that with me? Wake up. Mary and the men marched the three miles into the village together. Mary went to sleep in the hut, wondering when the chief would come back. Mary awoke the next morning, hurting all over, but she couldn't stay in bed all day. Today was Sunday. There were children to dress and feed and a church service to hold. Mary got the children ready for the day, and she, the children, and Mr. Bishop went outside to hold the church service. Several curious slaves stood in the background, wondering what the strange woman was doing. A few days later, the people started returning from the funeral. The chief was not particularly pleased to see Mary, but he gave her a larger hut to stay in, and Mary began to learn how this tribe lived, and she learned their language. Things weren't easy there. Many of these people were drunk all the time. Instead of using money to buy things, they traded for bottles of alcohol. They got so drunk that they didn't 
did all kinds of terrible things to one another. Use your face to show me how that might make Mary feel. Yeah, these people even believed in witchcraft. When someone important got sick or died, they thought it was because another tribe had cast a spell on them. Often wars started when one tribe tried to get even with another tribe for casting spells. Mary knew the violence had to stop. She met someone who would help her with this big job. Soon after moving to the village, Mary made friends with a woman named Ma Amy. Can you say that with me? Ma Amy. Do any of you have a secret code that you use with your friends? Well, Mary and Ma Amy had a secret code they used. Ma Amy had a messenger deliver an empty medicine bottle to Mary whenever she needed Mary to come quickly. The messenger would tell Mary, Ma Amy needs medicine. When Mary heard that, she ran as quickly as she could to whatever the trouble was. Let's stand up and pretend to run with Mary. Good job. You may sit back down now. There were many times when a war was about to break out, but Ma Amy would send Mary their secret message and Mary would come just in time to stop the war. She would make all the chiefs sit down and talk about what the problem was. God used Mary to save the lives of this people. She began to adjust to the life in the village and she got to know the people and told them about Jesus and tried to help them when they were sick. One day, Mary got a message from another village. A chief is very sick and about to die. He wants you to come and take care of him. Mary knew that if he died, hundreds of slaves would be killed according to their custom. Mary told the chief about what she was going to do. And he said, don't go. I can't protect you if you go to that village. Mary went to her hut and prayed, God, what do you want me to do with this chief, about this chief? After Mary prayed, she knew what she must do. She put together a bag of supplies and began walking. She and a helper struggled through the rainy jungle. Mary thought about the wild animals she would need to avoid and the deep rivers she would need to cross. Can you pretend to cross a river with me? Hold your supplies up really high over your head so they don't get wet. Good. Finally, she arrived at the village. She examined the chief and almost immediately knew what to do. She gave him some medicine and prayed for him. After a few days, he got better. The chief's life was saved. Not only that, hundreds of slaves' lives were saved as well. The people in the village were amazed. How could Mary heal people like that? They thought she had magical powers. But Mary told the people about God, that he is the one who heals, and he sent his only son to die on the cross for their sins. Mary returned to her original village and rescued many people and helped them to see that God knows the best way to live. Before Mary had gone to the village to live, the chief promised her a house and mission headquarters of her own. But every time she asked him about it, he came up with an excuse or a reason why he couldn't start building it. Mary waited and prayed, and then one day, for reasons she never knew, the village started building her a house. It was a, it was a wonderful house with a wonderful yard. Mary was quite comfortable. The only thing she really wanted that it didn't have was windows and doors. Mary wrote to her friends in Scotland asking if someone could come and install them for her. Sometime later, Mary heard an unusual sound coming from the jungle. It was a man singing in a Scottish accent. Charles Ovens had come all the way from Scotland to put windows and doors in her house. As they talked, Charles realized Mary needed a bigger and better house. He decided to build it for her. He t it took a while, but finally her two-story house was finished, complete with windows and doors. The villagers were amazed at Mary's lovely house. The new house could hold all the people who came to her, babies, sick people, students, and others. Now she could help even more people and tell them about Jesus. God used Mary to help so many people. She helped sick people get better and she stopped many wars before they had a chance to begin. But even though Mary was doing many amazing things, her life wasn't easy. She was sick a lot of the time. Once again, she became so sick that she had to leave Calabar. Can you pretend to wave goodbye as Mary, to Mary as she Can you pretend to wave goodbye to Mary as she sails away on a ship? Did Mary ever come back to the country she loved? You'll have to come back next week to find out.
We're so glad that you joined us tonight. It was good to have you here. I hope you learned something. Let's thank God for helping us learn tonight. Lord, thank you for a good lesson. Will you help us this week to follow you and obey you and be more like you? Bless every one of these boys and girls as they live for you this week. Amen. Good to have you with us. We love you and we miss you. We're praying for you. If you haven't done it already, be sure to remind your mom or dad to sign you up for VBS. It's exciting and it's coming up soon. See you later.